When I think about college, it doesn't just bring me back to my childhood. It pulls me back to all those moments that made me fall in love with food and cooking. From the smell of the charcoal heating the crackling meat to the sound of the piping hot oil hitting the pan, these are all still so vivid in my mind. You might be wondering why we took this episode out of the water and into the city. It's because cooking and surfing share a similar kind of stoke. It only seems fitting to wrap up this season coming back home and revisiting the people and places that made a difference in my life. Before working in MasterChef brought me to Manila, I was running two restaurants, and they're still around today. Maipa was the first one I started serving Chinese favorites in a casual setting. Going to Maipa today was very, very nostalgic. Saw the old photos on the wall, and seeing my staff being there from beginning to this day, I felt grateful for them. I also felt proud. You know, they're still doing it. Nandyan pa yung intensity. Maipao started it all. All my best cooks came from Maipao. That was everyone's training ground. Because of Maipao, I have Sarsa. My dad gave me the chance to open up my own. He loaned me the money. He said, all right, let's be partners in this. Maipao's a tribute to my grandfather. My grandfather is Chinese, and he's never seen me cook Chinese food. He's never even tried my cooking. Because of visiting him, every other day for lunch. That's where I developed that palate for Chinese food. So my pal is very close to my heart. After that came Mushu, an Asian restaurant that turns into a bar at night. In Australia, I worked in all the Asian restaurants there. So when I got back here, that was the first thing I did, open an Asian restaurant. And then at night, it becomes a bar. So we have good bar chows. We have this ultra thin crust pizza. It breaks in your mouth. Going back to Mushu, galeng, I'm so proud of them. Food is good. They care in what they do. I could feel that they're happy. It's one small happy family. It's tight-knit. You could feel how personal the service is. Bacolod is known for its Negrense cuisine. It's soul food at its finest. Ilongos are known to be sweet, caring, and hospitable. And you taste that in our food. We pour so much love into our cooking that you actually feel it when you take a bite. Ang Ilongo, magaling lang kumain. Parang gifted taste buds nila eh. Ay, yung flavor ng ano, mga inahanap nila, parang iba eh. Ilongo food is so unique. It's because of the people. They just have such a rich culture. I believe it starts with uh, homemade meals that pass on from one generation to the next. And people open up restaurants. And that home cooking style still prevails. You can't say you've been to Bacol if you don't stop by Manukan country. Everybody comes here because it's the most local Inasal experience you can get. Even if there are many different choices, I always find myself at Bernadette's, and I am never disappointed. So this is Bernadette. I've been eating here since puberty. I think Bernadette's one of the best Inasal cooks here in the country. My family always eats here. Suki talaga kami. And actually, her son works for me. But yung Inasal ng anak niya, wala talagang sinabi sa Inasal lang nanay niya. Sorry, Juna. Wow. When I'm in Bacolod, I'm normally here around 2, 3 a.m. And before coming here, we'd call first. So it's so convenient, you know, you get out of the bar, you're like, hotline, Bernadette. Dad, tatlong pecho, tatlong paa, tatlong rice. This is the husband of Bernadette. Amo nga akong bana. Si Nonoy. Si Bernadette sa labas, tapos si Nonoy dito sa kusina. Chicken in a sal is really good when it's cooked to order. Calamansi, 70% vinegar, 30% soy sauce. You want the coconut vinegar to be the star. Look at this. See, if I don't eat here, I go to the other place, Bernadette will give me a stare. No, it's like, why are you eating here? Because I've eaten here ever since. Luis's is a Chinese hole in the wall that's been around for 20 years, run by Joseph and his family. It's one of my favorite hidden gems in Bacolod. They serve really good fried chicken and crispy garlic spareribs. I actually have one dish in our restaurant that is inspired by Luis's garlic spareribs, but theirs is the best. How long na ang Luis's? We started 1997. It's just the three of them, his wife, his son, and he said, if you get busy and you get tired, quality will change. Galing, no? Sometimes it's not all about the money. 
when you're stuck in the city, you think that your dish is good na, pero once you've tried other things, na yung masarap pa pala. It's so juicy, pero the exterior is so crispy because they put this special flour. It's at the same time, the batter is eggy, garlicky. And then this garlic, it's sweet because it's cooked slowly, I think. Two hours away from Bacod, we drove to Hinigaran for some lunch. Kalanan Sadalan specializes in grilled Filipino staples. Right when you get there, you're instantly greeted by a thick haze of smoke and that smell of meat roasting on the grill. They've really mastered it. Their uh, grill and then charcoal is so close to each other. The pork develops that nice crusty layer from the fat. It's on the charred, crispy side. The pork has never been frozen. The squid is so good because of what the squid eats. It eats uh, grass from this town. And this is my idol. But he's not laughing because he's uh, getting slammed by orders. He's normally very friendly. But today, uh, maybe he didn't yung his teeth, so he didn't have a smile. <laughs> they are responsible for the best pork chops in the Philippines. And I come here every now and then, and I would drive an hour to an hour and a half just to have the pork chops. Piaya is a classic sweet snack here in Bacolod. It's basically flatbread filled with muscovado sugar. When toasted, you get a soft flaky crust with a nice gooey center. I visited Fresh Start Organics to try some of their organic piaya. So this is the dough of the piaya. It's a first class flour, water, and coconut oil. Meron siyang sesame seed na mix. And then we have three kinds of flavor. All right, I'm gonna taste. I'll taste the muscovado. Oh, it's nice and flaky. Mm. Best eaten when fresh and hot, of course. I wanted to take some time out on this trip to visit one of my mentors, Chef Guido. He owns and runs the Museum Cafe in Bacolod and serves authentic farm-to-table food. His passion for sourcing and working with local ingredients is infectious using traditional European cooking techniques to enhance his dishes. We try to play as much as possible with the beautiful ingredients from Negros. I brainstormed a lot with JP because in my eyes, he was one of the developers already here from an uh, extension to the Filipino kitchen. Beef tenderloin. Okay. Negros. Don't buy foreign. Very natural cow. That's actually the best meat of the island. The chef is doing this to feel if it's soft. The finger go through it for sure. This is belly part, uh -huh. first salted, long time in the oven, and then in mahogany smoke. It's still beautiful pinkish, you see that? Again, just logo. What's Pata, this? Pata negros, oh. we call that. 10 days in the salt. Cooked ham, Cooked boiled ham. ham. Four and a half hours in the salt. This is the same cow as you saw the beef tenderloin, slow cooked. Now you have to slice it a little lot thinner. I couldn't help myself. We make our own cheeses, just pure cheese. This is with uh, chives, and that's with cumin. It's a uh, very rich milk with a high taste. A lot of these kind of things you get on your plate. I learned so much from him when I was just starting out. And even now, I'm still a sponge. Uh, JP is surfing on the waves of food. Yeah, he is a very nice guy, and uh, I admire what he is doing, and he is going forward. He is uh, in the strength of his life, uh, building up a career. What I come to bring to the people here to show what you can uh, do more with the ingredients. GP, again, is on that same track. He is doing great, very good. Whenever I spend time with Guido, the learning never ends. He reminds me to never stop experimenting in the kitchen and stay curious. Cheers. And, uh, Thanks for having us. Now, here, here on our menu, we call it 333. Three cold cuts, roast beef, there is the pata negros, and there is the, the smoked bacon. We have that with three sauces, butter, garlic sauce, mustard sauce. We make our own mayonnaise, we make our own mustard, so it's all natural. Mm -hmm. The third three are three kinds of bread. 
25% fine whole wheat, 50% fine whole wheat, 100% whole wheat. So that makes the fibers in there that your body much better can digest the fibers. Taste develops so much more here. It's the real taste of uh, wheat, so you can make an unbelievable amount of combinations with the different kinds of bread and the different, different sauces kinds. and whatever. Yeah, different That's meats. The, the philosophy of this dish. Food is not for making money, it's for your body to feel good and to have nice taste and nice smell and it has to look beautiful. That's another story than only making money out of food. The third wave coffee bug has been in Manila for a while now. So when I found out it hit Bacolod, I knew I had to sneak a visit. Coffee Culture Roastery is the first artisanal coffee roaster in town with quality blends and beans sourced from the Philippines and around the world. Right when you step in, you're immediately drawn to the smell. It's the beans roasting fresh in store. I met with Thomas, one of the owners, and learned that they support local farmers and source the beans direct. Why a coffee shop? When work brought me to Negros, I started working with coffee farmers. I wanted to help them to increase their income and improve their quality and their production. And then I wanted to learn more and more. Coffee is in my blood, or maybe I have so more coffee long? than blood. <laughs> <laughs> and what brought you to Bacolod? Well, my wife is from here. I was a volunteer for a German organization. Mm -hmm. And I fell in love with Negros. <laughs> right. They say Ilongo cuisine is very Namit. So what's your thought Namit about Namit <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm a foreigner, obviously, and I'm very much aware that most foreigners kind of have reservation towards Filipino food. Mm -hmm. And I think that's not right, because the Philippine cuisine, especially the Negrense cuisine, has a lot to offer. Earlier. I heard you say that um, we are known for our food, but yes. not for our coffee. The Negrense pride themselves to have one of the best food in the country. Good food and good coffee should go hand in hand. Right. You should not spend money on a good meal and then you round it off with bad coffee or instant coffee. What do you see in the next five, ten years? A large degree of sophistication. People will start to move away from instant coffee towards freshly brewed coffee, whole right. beans. Right. and go more into the quality. We've seen that in other countries and there's no reason to believe why it shouldn't happen here. A range of Philippine coffees from Benguet, from Bukidnon, from Mount Apo, from Negros. And people are now specifically asked for a certain origin. Do you have Mount Apo? I like this one better over, let's say, a Benguet. Our coffee in Negros, is it strong? And Robusta is the, the one that gives you the kick. It has a lot of caffeine. And it's good. It's a really good quality. Most of it, it's organic. It's shade grown. It comes from the Mont Canlon areas, North Negros Forest. Uh -huh. Does that have potential to oh, go up yes. against the other coffees in the world? Or? Oh, yes. We just need to work more on quality. We need to be closer to the farmers. We need to help them and bridge the link. It's so good seeing more like-minded individuals running spaces fueled by so much passion and creative energy. When you're in Bacolod and want to stay central in downtown, book at El Fisher. El Fisher Hotel started in 1990s for the purpose of helping the community, helping the citizens of Bacolod, and also to put a hotel, which is actually going to be a landmark of Bacolod City. El Fisher Hotel is actually the premier hotel here in Bacolod. We cater for conventions and leisures. We are known for good food. Excited about this coming year because you know, there's a lot of programs coming up. We offer the best buffet here in Bacolod, which complements our food and beverage. The room rate incorporates free breakfast, which is a good touch for our guests. Just 47 kilometers from the city, we drove north up the mountainside to Don Salvador Benedicto, the summer capital of Negros, passing forests of pine trees, rice terraces, breathtaking views, and surrounded by nature, my parents' rest house was the perfect setting for the meal we were going to share that day. I wanted to make this extra special for everyone, so I was feeling both nervous and excited. Here in Bacolod, the stuffing for our lechon is normally lemongrass, mashed batuan and garlic, and then you just have salt. Mabango from the lemongrass, it's sour from the batuan, it's garlicky, and it's salty. For additional reinforcement, my friend Mark was there to make Enteng's Bacolod lechon and kinilaw. To me, it's the best in the country. This is Mark Lobaton, the son of Enteng Lobaton, the kinilaw king of the Philippines 
and the best lechonero for me in the country. He's in the States now, so he sent his son over. Mark is doing a fine job continuing Enteng's legacy. Kailangan ko din magandahan. Masarap pin present na maganda yung pagkain. Really represent namin ang Negros. So kailangan i-boost namin yung lugar namin. Good batuan. The sourness. Ito medyo mabilog yung asim niya. Yung batuan at garlic at sea salt, mixed it para mag-incorporate lahat na flavors. And now, he's rubbing it inside the cavity of the pork. So it's tastier. It's mas kalat yung flavors. Sea salt is better than iodized salt because pag sea salt, makokontrol mo yung alat. The secret of a good lechon is the sourcing of the pig also. He's very particular kung saan niya kinukuha yung pig. Sila, Mark, pag nag-request ka na gusto mo lagyan ng stuffing ng manok yung lechon, they also do it. Hi, Mom. Welcome to our bahay kubo. <laughs> this is my mom, and then we are here at her lovely home. She was kind enough to host us for today. So thank you. You're welcome, and I welcome you with love. With help from Ronnie, my chef from Sarsa, and David, a friend who just got into cooking, we set out to experiment with everything we had. Sort of like doing a sinuglao. Lechon baboy. Lechon manok. Kinilao. I asked Riel to make a cheese platter to go with the breads that she bought. You could pick whatever cheese you want for your salad. So the first salad was this grilled vegetable salad with bangus dressing. The second salad was sort of like a grilled mushroom honey mansi. This guy from Senor Juan, he gave me these chorizos that he makes. Ground Spanish chorizo, whole Spanish chorizo. The black rice was with Spanish chorizo. The red rice was just topped with a seared uh, queso pote. When I was in cooking school, Tracy and I would go home to Bacolod and we would do these dinners where she would arrange the dining area and I would do the cooking. So, and it's so cool that we're doing it here again at my parents' house. What JP was like growing up, very mischievous, very playful. You know, he's our youngest brother, so we always doted on him. But he was very sweet. Cooking for my family was very heartwarming. I don't really cook for them as much. I only cook for them once every other year. And it was at my mom's house. She invited all her close friends. My sister Tracy and her daughter Oriah came over from Manila. It felt very special. Na subong ari tadi sa Don Salvador sa balay sang nanay ko sa so, amuni ang finale. So that's why I got this guy I said let's go maluto tadua. Mark prepared the lechon and then we have shrimp kinilaw, special vinegar. Tapos we have kinilaw. Then we have lechon manok. So ang atun salad is we have a grilled mushroom kesong puti sardines dressing. Then we have here a grilled vegetables with mozzarella, all the cheeses from Negros from Bacolod. Red rice topped with seared kesong puti. This is our black rice topped with grated coconut, chorizo mungo. All right, sige. Thank you. Kaunta. What matters most is making time for those who are important to you, seeing their smiles, sharing random stories, and of course, eating a memorable meal together are the simple joys we often take for granted. Ah, I love his rice. The black rice with the coconut. First of all, I think JP and I share the same passion for the tone. We love the salad that he made. That's the best quinilao that you can have in Negros. I could see how my dad was a bit proud. He would never acknowledge me about my cooking, but I could see and feel in his energy that he was very happy. There's something about going back to my hometown that's both bittersweet and nostalgic. Seeing familiar faces and places that bring me back to my childhood. So we're at my home where I grew up, our living room. This is our lanai, our rooms over there. Back in high school, you know, we'd all have curfews, right? So my mom would lock this door purposely so that she knows what time I go home. Grabe, nakakainis. And yesterday when I got home, she locked it. I don't know why, I'm 37. Remember when he was young, he's like a kitty kitty. He's so malikot. So playful. It's very good with Lego. And I want to show you something that my parents can't get rid of. It's a bit embarrassing, but what the heck? You're here already. Yeah, this is so embarrassing. I don't know why. They made it into a curtain. Imagine. <laughs> That's so cheesy. Oh, I remember this table. We put a lot of good food here. We did a lot of good dinners here. This was our training ground. We practiced a lot here. 
I remember going to three different campuses, freshman for like three years, hopping around three different schools. He ended up in cooking school and he just blossomed. So this was when I graduated in Sydney. My parents flew over, that's my best friend Jerry. And this was the graduating class. So almost half didn't make it. I was actually always the last to finish. I was just telling my wife, I said, how JP has changed, you know? He has really matured a lot and he has learned so much. He's a better person now. Being here in Bohorod, I've realized the value of family. I'm sure I'm more mature because I'm thinking about it, like the family. And maybe one day my own, I don't know, it's huh, really strange. Just seeing my family, how happy everyone is when we're all together. Why not have your own so the family can grow, you know? Flashbacks of memories put me under a spell. My whole life passing rapidly inside my head up to this very moment. And in a matter of seconds, I wake up from this reverie. I am home, and I couldn't ask for anything more. Let me give you a big, really, really, really big hug. Mm -hmm.